Hamburger here. Today I thought we'll begin uh, something that's been so requested and it's talking about my all-time favourite comics. This channel's been going about three years. I talk about my favourite books and I talk about comics every week but I never go into too much detail. And so today I thought I'd start talking to you about my all-time favourites starting with a book that I've read maybe 20 to 30 times. In fact when I started writing uh, all the notes that are down here for this video <laughs> I read it again. I couldn't help myself. Uh, the book is called French Milk and it's by Lucy Nisley. I read this book many many years ago for the very first time. It came out in 2007 uh, and Lucy I think was only 23 years old when this went to print. It was her first huge graphic novel outside of the internet uh, and a really exciting time for her. I in my life have been super super lucky and been able to meet Lucy twice to, to talk to her, see her sketchings, hang out with her out on the grass over here. Uh, it was a magical moment to be able to speak to someone about a book that's so important to you. French Milk is all about a trip that Lucy and her mum took to Paris. They were there for five weeks, uh, lived in an apartment and just found the Parisian way of life. I have always wanted to have a holiday like they had in this book. It's very much a travel journal and encompasses photos, sketches and what I love, one of my favourite types of storytelling, I'm going to just call it arrow storytelling. I don't know the official name for it but it's when there's an image and arrows pointing to particular parts. So perhaps there's a piece of food and she'll point to the sauce and tell you what it is and then another arrow telling you what type of protein it is. Just tiny little details that come into focus because an arrow is placed there. This book, French Milk, it was the first time that I had actually seen this type of storytelling, arrow storytelling, and I've been obsessed with it ever since. But the reason this book is just so enjoyable to me is because it really is like a trip. You see every part of the holiday from her preparing and having anxiety and going on the plane to arriving, uh, getting jet lagged, seeing all the Parisian way of life, the food, the smells, and that's what Lucy is so very, very good at. I feel feel like I'm on that trip with her and even though I'm just sitting in a cafe reading the book I truly feel immersed in that world. I see little moments with her and her mother as they sit at cafes smoking cigarettes and eating cheese and I just love it. I'm there with them. It's an escape from everyday reality. When I first read French Milk I was only around 20 years old. I'm 30 now. It's a long time ago. <laughs> when I read it I hadn't really done anything sophisticated in my life and through this book you see Lucy hanging out with her mother's friends in Paris and she has friends that arrive from other countries just to spend time with her while she's in this beautiful apartment in Paris. They go shopping at the Rue Morgue and buy this beautiful food and it's so detailed and just drawn there for you or photos and I just felt so sophisticated reading this book like it was the kind of holiday that an adult goes on but it's not. I've discovered that this book, this trip is something so special. This this relationship between her and her mother and this beautiful time they had in Paris together is just such a special beautiful moment and I just love reading it over and over again. There are several parts of this book that have kind of stuck with me through adulthood and things that in everyday life seem to come up. The first is this photo that she took in an art gallery and it says no one in this picture is looking directly at the art and I remember that every time I'm in an art gallery I try not to take photos or you know go on my phone or anything like that and try to really take it in. It had such an enormous impact and for such I don't know such a small part of a travel journal that's the kind of impact it's had on me. The other part was when she started to have uh, travel anxiety. So when she was actually in Paris, she started to get very homesick. And for me, I suffer from anxiety. And when I travel is when it's at its worst because I love routine. I like doing the same thing every day. And when I break out of that, it can be overwhelming. I miss my family and friends and house and cats and life here. Uh, so when she starts talking about that and then trying to cover up the fact that she's sad about being in this beautiful place like Paris and missing home uh, I just related to it and then there's this panel where she's trying to ignore it she doesn't want to 
uh, I don't know, she doesn't want to deal with it. And so she starts drawing narwhals and a page full of narwhals, narwhals, narwhals. And then there's her riding a narwhal away from depression and anxiety. And that particular image has just really stuck with me. The fact that she just tried to keep going and not deal with what was happening and just be okay with the fact that it's okay to be homesick and, you know, love where you're from and then try and overcome that. It's okay, lots of people suffer from that. So there are two other things that I really, really loved and had such an impact uh, from this book for me. It also has impacted the way I travel. I try to keep every little part of when I travel from receipts to little drawings of food that I ate. I really try to take it all in and Lucy's book, French Milk, just influenced my life, how I travel and how to appreciate tiny little things in life. So I hope you guys enjoyed this chat about Lucy Nisley's French Milk. I hope you'll check it out. She's a great storyteller taking time to put detail into minute things, sprigs of time, uh, little facial expressions. Her ink work is beautiful. I hope you guys will check it out along with some of her other books. She's got Relish which is about foodie parents, uh, Displacement which is about the frailty of life when she went on a cruise with her grandparents. Uh, there's so many wonderful books by her all completely relatable and beautiful and I hope you'll take the time to check out her work. I hope you enjoyed this video, the first video talking about some of my all-time favorite comics. Let me know what some of your favorite comics are in the comments down below. Have a great week and I'll catch you guys a little bit later. Bye!